Arcade Perfect, my arse. Right, okay guys, welcome to another Arcade Perfect, my arse. This week I'm going to be taking a look at uh, Tato Game, The New Zealand Story. Now this game has been probably the most requested game I've had to have this uh, feature done in it. Uh, so here we go, so I'm looking at Wikipedia, um, I mean first off, what a bizarre name, it's a really really quite bizarre name for a, an arcade game, you know, when you think about it, the New Zealand story, it makes no sense at all, so anyway let's see if this uh, Wikipedia tells us anything, the New Zealand story is a 1988 arcade game developed and published by Tato. The game's concept and setting were inspired from a holiday trip in New Zealand. Ah, there you go, by one of the Tato programmers. The player controls Tiki, a Kiwi who must save his lover Fifi. <laughs> <coughs> I thought that little chick was at bloody kindergarten. She shouldn't be having sex at that age. Seriously. Uh, and several of his other Kiwi chick friends who have been kidnapped by a large blue leopard seal. While avoiding enemies, the player has to navigate a scrolling maze-like level, at the end of which they release one of Tiki's Kiwi Cheek. Bloody hell, that is a mouthful! While they release one of Tiki's Kiwi Chick Friends, trapped in a cage. In 2005, the arcade game received a remake for the Nintendo DS under the title New Zealand Story Revolution. I've got to say, I've never ever seen um, an arcade cab for this game. I mean, uh, I'm imagining that it's probably not a particularly uh, common game. I don't know, I'm just guessing, but I've certainly never seen one. Now, all these play events I've been to, I've never ever seen one. I'd be interested to know if Arcade Club has got one. They seem to have everything, so it would be quite interesting to see if they had one. Anyway, enough of my warblings, let's take a wee look at the arcade version. Okay, it did come up with a wee warning saying that uh, the ROM set for this hasn't been dumped properly, so I don't know what's missing, but we'll just give it a go. So anyway, let's batter on insert coin. Because there's quite a few versions of this, I'm only going to probably play one level per uh, version. Look at that little bad chick smoking. <laughs> There's something wrong about this intro. I don't think you'd get away with it nowadays. Let's, ah. That is the cutest sound ever. Wait a minute, jump. Just familiarise myself with the controls. <coughs> yeah, it's just so ridiculously cute. Now anyone that watches my channel on a regular basis will know that, uh, hang on I'm just going to turn down the volume a wee bit, will probably know that I'm not really into cute games but I've got a soft spot for this game. <laughs> What's not to like about a little uh, fluffy kiwi? Although obviously the fact that he's got a lover, he's obviously slightly older. Bollocks, he's obviously slightly older than we think he is. Well, that was shit, let's go back in again. <laughs> yeah, this is one of these games, it's... <coughs> it's kind of... It doesn't really get a lot of recognition. I mean, people constantly going about how wonderful Rain Boylands is, and... Complete luck. Uh, yeah, people going about Bubble Bobble, people going about Rainbow Islands, but not many people mention this wee game. Yeah, it's kind of bizarre, if you shoot these wee guys, you can then jump onto their little things like that, and then you can fly about. Time, I think. Ow, arse. I mean, it's some bizarre artwork. Look at that circus thing. That would give you bloody nightmares. Arse. Right, come on, I want to try and. I want to try and get to the end of the level. Wow, 
I got off. Hey! Off you go, there you go. Right, anyway, that's the arcade one. Let's batter on to some home versions. Right, okay, this is the Commodore 64 one. Now, apologies, uh, <laughs> this is actually the second time I've uh, recorded the Commodore 64 one when I was making the original video for this arcade pit in my arse. For whatever reason, um, I didn't include it in the, the final version, um, as quite a few people pointed out. Um, so yeah, this is version 2 of the RP Perfect My Arse. So yeah, C64 one. Let's uh, get going. Start the um, joystick. Right, I think we'll go for sound effects. Wait, I like the presentation. Start the game. Now, straight off the bat, I've got to say I am, ah bollocks, I'm very, very impressed with the graphics. This could, this could be a 16-bit version. It looks really, really nice. Same with other uh, computer versions, obviously there's only one fire button, bloody hell. There's only one fire button, so to jump, you press up the way. Gonna be able to avoid them. Hop! Oh. <laughs> That's a tough old cookie. Ah, that's what we want. That's what we want. Yeah, graphics are lovely. Got to see the little duck looks more like Orville. Orville the duck rather than uh, a kiwi. Oops, that came over. That's what it was. Music's good, graphics are excellent. Now I noticed uh, they use a technique that was uh, Ocean kind of pioneered, whereby they would uh, outline the sprites with a black outline, which gave a really nice kind of high res look to it. Never ever played this, I must admit. Oh, this is super impressive. I just picked up. This is the equivalent of the fire, the fireball in Ghosts and Goblins. It's shit. Where's the check going? Where has this little check going? <clears throat> Come on! Take out. Oh, I can't see me. How did I get over here? <clears throat> I maybe jump. There we go. Hey, there he is. Ah, not quite so high it is. <laughs> Rescue your low res friend. Ah, bollocks. But I've got to say, this is really, really impressive. Yeah, it's not, it's not as detailed as the Commodore, uh, as the 16 bit versions, obviously, you know. But for a, an 8 bit version, this is really, really nice. It's got the little cute little. Right, anyway, listen, that is the Commodore 64 one. Let's take a look at another version. Right, okay, this is the Amstrad one. Oh, hang on, turn the volumes in a wee bit. Now, I don't know whether this is the emulator that's making it go this slow, unlikely, because the emulator is pretty spot on. It's just awfully slow. And I notice it's also a multi-load game, which I was quite surprised at, but I'm assuming the, the C64 one and the Spectrum will be multi-load as well. It's just a 
a bit sluggish. And even the, the scrolling's not the greatest. The Amstrad's one of these computers. It seems to have either the worst version or the best version. I mean, the Amstrad, when it's done properly, is a very, very capable machine. I mean, there was a a recent release of uh, Ghosts and Goblins for the Amstrad, and it's just absolutely stunning. It really, it, it does look arcade perfect. And then you have something like this, which looks nice enough. The scrolling's not good. The screen's awful small as well. Because it's so slow, it just makes it makes playing it that wee bit awkward. And I think the scrolling as well. I'm, I'm not I'm not a fan of that at all. Even the use of colours, it looks like these are kind of half invisible. These wee guys. So I think this one could have been so much better. Ah, bollocks, there's a wee bird there. Listen, I'm not going to play any more of that. That's the Amstrad one. Mm, I'm not a big fan of it. I've only played it for, what, two minutes. Um, it might be better if you're playing it on a proper Amstrad on a bigger screen, but I'm not a huge fan of that. So anyway, let's move on. Right, okay, this is the Commodore Amiga one. This was the one that I did play back in the day. I remember it being pretty damned authentic, but well, I'm saying that I'd never seen the arcade one, but yeah, that looks lovely. Obviously, the difference with this one is you press uh, up to jump, whereas the arcade ones go its own. Yeah. If anything, this one seems a wee bit kind of snappier. Sort of a bit more responsive than that people. Who's making that noise? Is that my phone or is it? No, it's not. It's a, it's a computer's making that kind of strange whiny noise. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, this is about. Well, it seems a bit easier. We'll maybe play another real level because that was a bit quick. But yeah, you'd be hard pushed to get a, a better version than this. <laughs> and it's even got a nice VA. Uh, Cute, chicky sound. And the elephant, I thought it was something else for a second. This is more like the first level of that kid. Oh, ah, it was. That was. That was the first level in the arcade, and yeah, it's the second level in the Amiga one. <coughs> so unless, of course, I've maybe just put the that first level in the Amiga one just as a wee kind of warm up or something. Interesting. Anyway, right, that's enough of that one. That's the Commodore Amiga one, and that is rather tasty. Right, this is the Sega Master System one. So oh, let's get this. Get this one going. Uh, I noticed the cut out the wee smoking bit. It must have been uh, ruled out by by uh, by Sega. So, right, okay, we've got to see straight off the bat. This, if you told me this was the arcade one, 
I would believe you. This is impressive. You've got to wonder what the people were smoking back in the day that came up with these games. I mean, some of the uh, some of the, the baddies were just mental. Ah, bollocks. Oh, that was lucky. No, it wasn't. Really, really tight controls and the graphics are just spot on. <coughs> As you can tell, I'm still in the realms of the man flu. <coughs> it is getting better, but it's still kind of lingering. It's just the cough, really, that's kind of lingering on, which is quite annoying. That is wicked. That is really, 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 really good. Right, let's move on. Right, okay, this is the ZX Spectrum one. And as expected, it's uh, it's uh, monochrome, which seemed to be the sort of the, the favoured technique back in the day on the little Spectrum. But I say though, I mean the graphics look spot on. Now that was, a, that was, it was a, you know what, it was a swings and roundabouts thing with the Spectrum. Yeah, it was black and white graphics. It wasn't black and white, it was like two colours, but the the payoff was the graphics look super detailed. And this is no exception. It plays really well as well. It's fast. Sounds excellent. And, you know what, if we could just Maybe the ZX Next will be what we're all looking for. I mean, this has got the graphics off the arcade. It just lacks the, just lacks the colour. But all in all, a great conversion. That is the Spectrum one. Let's crack on. Right, okay, this is the Atari ST one. Now, I think I did play this one back in the day as well. I'm sure I had this before I got the Amiga. Oh, the wee bad boy's smoking again. <coughs> I shouldn't have laughed because it just makes me cough. Jump, jump, hey, and he's out. Is that the one that's smoking actually? I'm not too sure. This is just as good as I remember it to be. Very similar to Amiga, good to see. Slightly tinnier sound, but I'm just being Mr. Ow, arse, well, that was close. I'm just being uh, a bit pedantic there. I don't want any bombs, there he is, there. Yeah, very authentic. That's when you knew you had a powerful computer when you were getting games like this. But as far as I was concerned, this was like the arcade. Well, I'd never seen the arcade one, but I'd seen almost the screenshots of it. <laughs> and it's not quite got a little. Uh, dee -dee 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 -dee. But you see, the arcade one is without a shadow of doubt got the best little uh, sound effect. Like, don't die, don't die. Because you can actually shoot, can't you? Quick, run! Run, 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 run! Hey! Right, yeah, that's the Atari ST one. That is absolutely top notch as well. Right, okay, this is the Nintendo Entertainment System one. Let's bar straight on. And same controls as arcade, you've got jump and you've got fire, so two separate fire buttons, whereas the, the computer ones, uh, it's pressing up to jump. And you get 
doing the up. <coughs> Food dying. Fall down or what? I need to wait for him to go to sleep, I'm guessing. There we go. Come to me, Mr. Kiwi. Ugh, flicker central. Now I know that is sometimes a problem that you've got with the NES, I don't know why that's just... It's to do with it. Not being able to display all these sprites without... Ah, balls. But absolutely nothing wrong with this. Oh, we don't want that bomb thing. We need to get on that wee... Thing. Look at that hideous looking clown. Ah, balls, I hit my head in the spikes at the top. Come to daddy! <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad version at all. That is really good. That is the NES one. Right, this one is the Sharp X 68000. So I'm expecting a completely flawless version of this game start key assign. Now let's just jump straight into game start. <laughs> that never gets boring that little intro. Jump! Right, so uh, interestingly, despite this being a computer, it does actually have two as the two fire buttons. You can see it's got the nice can you, shuttle subtle shuttle my, my, honestly my brain just talks the biggest load of fish. And it's got a nice little light. Eh, 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 eh. I didn't expect this would be anything less than, than perfect. You know what, that actually might not be a bad call. Yeah. Hurry up! Give me a break, I've just started. <laughs> Help me! expect this would be any less than what it is, if that makes any sense. And that was why this system was so revered, because <coughs> it was basically an arcade cabinet. They developed arcade games in this. But then that's the reason it was, I don't know how much it cost, I think it was well over a thousand pounds. came out in Japan and probably goes for even more now. Don't hang your head in the spikes at the top if you can help it. Hooray! Yeah, that is brilliant. That is the Sharp X 68000. Let's take a look at what I think is the last version. And next up is the Sega Mega Drive one. Oh, let's go start button. Start button. There we go. It always helps if you click in the emulator window.
Oh, you cheeky little shite. Come to daddy. You're not quite so brave now, are you, son? You get. <laughs> I think this level is. Oh, in the deep end. This level is slightly different from uh, the other versions. Yeah, it is slightly different. Oh, it's completely different. This is a far tougher level to start off with. So how do I... Have I just got to wait? If I fall down here, I'm dead. Yeah. Well, unless I've got to try and... That's a bit unfair. Mm -hmm. Let's go for one quick more go. I'll tell you one thing though, it's going to be so difficult deciding what is the best version of this game. There is so many good versions. thing. That's a bit like juice. Get off! Oh, that was close. I just want to get to the end of this level if I can. Hey! That is excellent. Slightly different. It's just got a slightly different starting level from the other ones, but that is really, really good. That is a Sega Mega Drive one. Right, okay, and this is the very last version that I've got. The, there was a version released for the FM Towns, um, but I don't have an emulator for that, and I don't have the game, so I can't show you. So, this is the PC Engine one. Let's get going. There we can get us started. How do we start this? There we go. Oh, turn the volume down a wee bit. Right. Jump and fire. There we go. Good to go. Wait a minute. I've just noticed. Can he fly there for a second? Maybe not. Maybe not. Ah, bollocks. yourself man <coughs> yep absolutely nothing wrong with that oh. 
<laughs> oh, have I picked up magic boots or something? I think it must have. Moving a lot quicker, aren't I? How do you get? I thought you could just jump on top of these little things. Right, anyway, listen, that is the PC Engine version. Sorry I'm not playing them for very long, but obviously, as you appreciate, there's quite a few versions to kind of get through. So, that is the very last version, so let's do a little recap. Right, okay, so yeah, quite a, quite a few versions um, of this game. I can't say. You know, apart from the Amstrad, and I don't mean to keep going on about the Amstrad 1, the Amstrad 1 was pretty poor, I have to say. Every other version was really, really impressive, you know. Um, they all utilised the strengths of the hardware, and that's, what's, that's, that's what annoys me about the Amstrad 1. The Amstrad 1 is, the machine itself is very capable, uh, and when you see how colourful the Commodore 64 one was, the Amstrad 1 could have probably done the best version out of all the 8-bit ones, um, but it didn't, and that's unfortunate. Um, so, apart from that one, yeah, I mean, they're all really good, I mean, the, the NES one, pretty arcade perfect, uh, Commodore 64 one, I thought was particularly impressive, it's not the best version at all, but I would say it's probably the most impressive, given the hardware that it was running on. Um, Spectrum one was good, Atari ST, Commodore Amiga one was good. Master System, I thought, was really, really good. Uh, Mega Drive was spot on. The X68000 was spot on. PC Engine 1 was perfect. You know what? Well, it's I, I, For the first time ever, I don't think I'm going to pick my favourite because there was just too many good versions. If you want Arcade Perfect ones, if you want the Arcade Perfect one, you'd probably have to go for the X68000. Um, but the Mega Drive... The PC Engine, the Master System, the NES, they're all fantastic. So I'm not going to pick a favourite. Um, like I said, if I was to pick the one that impresses me the most, given the hardware, it would have to be the Commodore 64. But there is not a bad version, apart from the Amstrad one. I was very disappointed with that. So anyway, guys, that is it. That's another Arcade Perfect My Arse. If there's a game you want to see, get this uh, treatment. Please put your comment below and I shall do my very best to do it. So as always guys, thank you very, very much for watching.